I is believe this, we're right. at the point of being recorded right now for anyone who that, is still doesn't have trying to watch or tried to watch us this evening. It kind of depends. We are live now. We um, More or less. did have a problem uh, with the equipment, so we are being recorded this evening, but we are not live. So you'll have to pick this up on the other side when the recording is played, and we all apologize for that. Um, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, and this is the uh, Thursday, January 7th, 2016 meeting of the Municipal Budget Committee. If everyone would stand and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Again, for the sake of our secretary and in attendance roll call, we could go around the room and everybody introduce <coughs> themselves as being here and present. Nick? Oh, I'm sorry. Mr. Bean? Bill Bean. Nick Bridal. Scott Blair. <laughs> Mike Pierce. Sandra Nicholson. Jones. Sonny Kravitz. Brian Lobham. Eileen Latimer. Stephen LeBranch. Mike Plouf. Bob Lash. Jerry Lenoy. Jim O'Loughlin. Thank you, this and gentlemen. Um, this evening we are going to go over the remaining Warren articles that we started from Tuesday night, January 5th. Now, Jim, um, yes, I could interrupt. Um, I would, um, at this juncture, like to uh, make a motion to reconsider Article 29, the War Memorial. And if I have a second, I will speak to my motion for reconsideration. I'll second it for discussion. Okay. okay. Um, after a lot of consideration after the meeting, um, I feel that there is plenty of time to really look at that article. I think everybody on this committee is in favor of it. I know it was a close vote, six to seven, but. I'm concerned about the wording of the article, the placement of the memorial. Uh, I know that when the courthouse was standing, there were war memorials out front. Uh, I don't know whatever happened to those war memorials. I don't think they are at High Street Cemetery. Uh, at least I haven't seen them at High Street Cemetery. Uh, so I have an issue with that, but I I think that there is plenty of time to reword that article and not perhaps put a location um, in it. I think it would probably pass this committee 100%. Uh, and so that is my rationale for bringing it back up for reconsideration. I would, I would support uh, us tabling this until we meet on Wednesday in hopes that the Board of Selectmen will uh, reword that, that Warren article. Well, she needs a second, does she not? I, I, believe, I believe almost everyone in this committee expressed some degree of support, or actually full support, for the concept. And I think if the Warren article were simply worded, as opposed to it's rather long now and it seems to be all inclusive, throwing everything in there, <coughs> I think if it was simply reworded to be something like, uh, Granting the American Legion Post up to five thousand dollars for a plan for a war memorial auditorium, just leave it like that, very simply worded. Uh, I would certainly be one hundred percent of support of that myself. Uh, I think it would be less confusing to the voters, and it would give them more of a, of a, a blank piece of paper in which to plan something that they truly want. And then this is going to come back to the voters anyway with a sub subsequent warrant article. That's the, the intent all along. So they'll be coming back with a plan, and, and we'll have a warrant article that makes sense. We can actually evaluate. The voters will be able to evaluate. So I would be in favor of this vote to table it till Wednesday in hopes the Board of Selectmen will favor something like the simple wording that was just suggested. So that is a vote to table article. I'll second that if 
Nobody well, else has already. It's been seconded. We're no, all okay. it's in discussion. Yeah, well, yeah, my motion was to reconsider. Yeah, have to vote on oh, wait a minute. Five. Let's get the let's get the motion right, especially since we're not on camera. Sandy, your motion was to reconsider. To reconsider. Okay. And I was actually offering the reconsideration. Maybe we should just vote that we are reconsidering it, and then we'll satisfy your motion, right? I think so. So, yeah, let's just vote for the reconsideration. Plus, it's for the discussion. Mm -hmm. And then we'll d vote on or decide on what we should do subsequently. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? Because I've got a comment before we vote. I'm happy to reconsider. Okay. Well, as many of us are. Did you have something there? Yeah, well, my understanding is Monday articles have to be by the 12th, which the board is left and don't vote on it Monday. Mm -hmm. can't change the wording. Well, that's the piece I wanted to throw in there, and I'm going to throw this out to Fred. They, they, they were a meeting on the 11th. I just have a meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. Right. Fred? Ma'am. Thank you for your attention. Um, I think that what we have here is a situation with this committee that unanimously we support the concept. You want, to, you want to remove the designation of the place? But we'd like to keep, you know, keep it simple. Yeah. And, you know, as Tim stated, perhaps just the 5000 going to uh, planning. To planning. Okay. American Legion. And now sitting here, all right, I've already asked Phil, and I don't want to go through 20 people. You're in the room. You're both going to be in the room Monday night with the Board of Selectmen. This is very important, and we all believe in it for the veterans. That's our, our whole point. Um, we can delay this and revote Wednesday night, should, which we would have to anyway if it was changed. Right. Can I ask you to bring, I'll send you something in writing to cover all bases. Okay. All right, but on the principles and really the intentions of this committee to be able to fund this and have a memorial all right, will you take that to the board Monday night? Oh, sure. Great. Okay. Excellent. So agreed? So, so, so it's, it's right now, though. Motion to reconsider. So we have to vote. It, it is. Right. Okay, yes. Okay. I'm going to put it into a state Let's of reconsideration Let's put a vote to reconsider pending the outcome of the um, Board of Selectmen's meeting yeah, on January 11th. Yeah. Is that okay? okay. All in favor. No, you can't no. do that. I can't. All right. The motion is simply to reconsider. reconsider. Simple? All right. Simple. That's All it. Right. All right. All those in favor? Opposed? All opposed. I see no reason to do it. We could reconsider, we could reconsider next week. No, you can't. Once you've made, you've already made the motion to push it forward, so you can't not Okay. Reconsider. Now, now that we've got that vote, okay. Madam Chair, I would move. All right. We table. Hold, hold, hold. The hold on. Wait a minute. 13 to 2. Don't right? remember. Oh, we're, without, we're without being live at the moment, and our secretary is not watching us. So right now, the article, Article 29, is as it was, as it was right. the other night under reconsideration. So we have two no's. We have Brian and Jim. Right. Madam Chair, I'd like to move. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Did yeah. we have when any have, abstentions? When you're at the ready. I'm not ready. Okay. Did we have any abstentions? Everyone else? We I'm have an ready. abstention with so Selectman you, you, B. You, this is the 14th person. Oh, Phil, you're a... Uh, Phil is... Uh, abstaining. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, everybody else is a yes. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else before we go into the more yeah. articles? Yeah. Tim? Yeah. Madam Chair, I would like to move to table further consideration on the War Memorial until Wednesday night. I'll second that. Right. Okay. All right, so Jones and Mike, mm -hmm. any, we don't, anybody feel they have to have a discussion on that? Anybody All right. discussion? And a vote? <coughs> Opposed? Same two. Same and abstentions? No, same thing. Same as before. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank All you right. guys. Tonight, DPW has the um, 
the load here, but I'm going to ask Diana to come up because you just have one in fairness to you, Diana. Go for it. Article 25. Yeah, Article 25. I'd really rather have them read. We've okay. had so many different versions, and for that reason alone. Okay. Thank you. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of, of 115350 for the purpose of purchasing the following items of equipment for the Recreation and Parks Department? A one ton dump truck for the Recreation Department to replace its current 1999 one ton dump truck, which shall be traded in as part of the purchase if deemed be prudent by the Recreation and Parks Director, Town Manager, and Board of Selectmen. New playground equipment to replace obsolete playground equipment at Five Point Park. All as determined by the Board of Selectmen, the Town Manager, and the Director of Recreation and Parks Department, and to authorize the withdrawal of 115350 for the recreation from the Recreation Infrastructure Special Revenue established for the purpose under Article 44 of the 2007 Annual Town Meeting. Majority vote required, no tax impact. I second that. To approve as read, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay, discussion. I'll start on this side. I said. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me, anyway. I'm getting laryngitis here. Um, this goes back to the discussion we had a little bit during the operating budget review. Ann's got nine thousand dollars in the operating expenses. Five for the redo of the skateboard park, or adding or refurbishing. Two for building repairs and two for playground resurfacing. I dug out the article that allowed her to get 20% of the beach precincts. precincts. It was, it's in 2006 and it's voted on and it shows up in 2007. And the article indicates that this beach uh, receipt to the rec department is for the construction or reconstruction of infrastructure. I have uh, looked up the infrastructure the dictionary and it includes equipment, personnel, or other expenses to keep the system together, to keep the department together. Um, this, is, this is per the dictionary. This fits the dictionary definition of infrastructure. What she's putting in the operating expenses, I feel, should be taken out of operating expenses, put into this article, and bump it to 124350. dollars will be tax relief to the taxpayers. They won't have to pay for the 9000 that's in her operating budget. This will come out of the, un, on her, out of the uh, beach receipts, which she has plenty of money of. And uh, that resolves the issue as far as I'm concerned. But, you know, between the beach receipts that Diane gets and the rec fund that she has, which has got plenty of money in it, Hundred forty, fifty thousand dollars as we speak. This is one hundred twenty coming off the beach uh, this year alone, roughly. I see no reason why these three items that I mentioned cannot be considered infrastructure. They fit the definition in the dictionary. <coughs> this is infrastructure, and that is what that article spoke to: construction or reconstruction of infrastructure. Now, that's how I see it. I think this should be bumped. I make a move, motion. This is bumped to one twenty-four, three fifty to include those infrastructure articles that I just mentioned, the skateboard park, the uh, building repairs, and the resurfacing of the playgrounds, the adding equipment or taking equipment out or whatever she wants to do. I know she had discussions. Well, point of order, Madam Chair, we, we do not have the authority to change the wording of these warrant articles. So your, your motion, I don't think, uh, is appropriate. Uh, is that true? If, if, if I may, I think what we did on the last round, we suggested the selectmen correct the issue if they so choose this is an opportunity to take money out of the parking lot receipts right. and put it to use and not stick it to the taxpayers anymore than we have to. It'll help lower that budget. Yeah. And It'll help a little bit, yeah. You know, and, right. you know, every little bit helps. I mean, you know, they, they've got a budget now that's a little bit, a much higher, I think 170, 180,000 higher than the default budget. Everything we do to try to get this budget 
So you're suggesting to the selectmen that they raise this warrant article by how much? Nine thousand. Nine thousand. Nine thousand dollars. What we I just I just want to say my understanding of this, and you probably are right, Jerry, but my understanding of this over the years is that this is to build infrastructure, the tennis courts, the inline hockey rink, things of that nature. The things that I put in the budget are things that have always been in the budget. That kind of thing is a repair of something or an expansion of something. It's not a major project like what this is, I believe, is intended for. Well, so that's why the two are, the are separated. The article said construction and reconstruction of the infrastructure. Well, this I, I just point make a point of order so we're following sequence. The motion on the table is to approve the article as written. Okay. Now, if you want to have a subsequent motion, that's fine. In terms of sending a communication to the board right. of selectmen or something like that, that's fine. But right now, the motion on the table is uh, to approve Article 25 as read. As written. Who made the motion? Steve LeBranch. You want to withdraw so we can yeah. reconsider this whole thing? Oh, you table it and then mm -hmm. send it back. Well, wait, wait, wait. Let, <laughs> let, let, me, put some, let me put some water into this, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's review what we have in front of us, okay? And understand the intent, Diana, and uh, Fred, on what direction we're taking. We, we have pockets of money all over the place that can be used, that can defray it from the budget itself and get you what you need. Adding something to the budget, should the budget fail, won't get you very far. Adding nine dollars, a nine thousand dollars to this Warren article out of a fund that has no tax impact will probably get you what you need. We're trying to find ways with funds we already have without raising money to get the things that we needed funded. The dilemma that we have here is that this, as written, we can choose to approve and not approve. Say it is approved. There is still Monday night. I hate that we have so little time and receive these things so late that we do have this very compact frame of time to say, you know what, there's a better mousetrap here. There's a better way of doing this. Um, and to, that would allow it to be taken out of the budget and would probably guarantee that you get what you need for this. What Jerry has done is looked up the nature of the fund when it was created to make sure in the legal path that the things that are being suggested are doable under the, the terms of the fund itself. And it appears that they are. So I think what we can do tonight is we can look to recommend or not recommend this as it sits. I don't see where there's a lot of discussion about it. Um, and then going forward, Fred, if we could have you put this on the list for Monday night, too, to... Well, let, it, let us as a committee make well, that decision. Well, I'm just saying, it's a question. If that would be possible to look at this one and changing the amount Monday, that can come back to us Wednesday. Everything... I'll need, I'll need to know where the money comes from, what account numbers, and so forth, in order to look at it. Yeah, if we as a committee decide to do that, we'll give you those details. Madam okay. Chair. Let's finish this, this one up. Motion on the table. Okay. I applaud Jerry's research work. Thank you very much for that information. But we do have a motion on the table. We need to follow regular order. Okay. The motion was to approve this Warren article as written. So anyone else want to speak to the content of the uh, this article as it is? Sonny? My question is, what's the balance in this special revenue fund before we vote? I don't know what the balance is. We always leave money in it. And I know from last year's warrant article, we had $148,000, which we wanted to use, and we saved enough money. We saved around $30,000. So, and I do know that there's 127,191 going in from this year's revenues. So yeah. that's 150 that I know of, and I know that there's more in there. I just don't know the exact number. The parking revenue goes into this fund, right? Right. Correct. The latest I have, the latest I have was a balance on the end of September of 15. It was 240,428. Um, yeah, but not all of this warrant articles had been completed yeah, by I that time. I understand, and I just want to say that's the latest. I don't have anything later. Okay. In other words, there's enough money in the, in oh, the yeah. fund. Okay. okay, absolutely, yeah. So we are clear on this 115,350 at the moment. We know that that funding is in there. 
Right. Okay. If we don't know the amount that's in there, then we can't know that there's enough. We should just tell well, us. Yeah. Uh, what she told us 150. 150. Christy yeah. told us that? No. No. Okay. Oh, you no, said 150? Yeah. It, was, it was around yeah. 100. There's 150 that we know of. For okay, sure. I'm sorry. I did not hear There's 127 okay. that we made this year that's going in there, and this right now is the asking is for 115. Right now the balance is 150? It's, it's more than that. Okay. Madam Chairman, I move we table this mo uh, motion until Wednesday night. Until when? No, we have no, a motion gonna, on the floor. I want to table, table the motion until next Wednesday. We don't have to vote on today. You can vote on it whenever you get done tabling it. You want to withdraw the motion? I don't mind withdrawing. I'll we'll just table it. That's fine. Whatever, whatever, the, whatever the chair would like. Take a motion like. to table. All right. Well, we presently what we have need, a. What we need is a withdrawal of the motion. I withdraw. Do you I want to withdraw? withdraw? Yeah. Who is my second? Table. Was it Nick? Do you, right, want to, he's, are you in agreement, Nick, to withdraw this? Yeah. I'm okay with that. Okay, yeah, I'm okay with it. I withdraw. Okay, do I have a new motion? Yes, I will vote, <laughs> make a motion again to table act this particular one article to Wednesday night. Table article 25. Table it till when, next Wednesday? Wednesday, yep. I'll I'll second. Second. Okay, Sonny seconded. Okay, Mike. All right, all those in favor of tabling this motion until next Wednesday? Mm -hmm. Unanimous. Okay. We'll see, we'll see you then, Diane. What's that? Once it fails, you won't get the money. Well, I might get some of the You didn't favor it? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was unanimous. No, you operating expenses. You give Fred the account number. I've got it here. Who's going to be providing you with the information of what to pull out of the budget, Madam Chair? The numbers? All we voted to do was table it. We, we just vote voted to table it. So thank you. back to revisit not, it. You're not sending anything to the board? It's not yet. We haven't made considerations on that regard yet. No, it's not up to me to do that. Okay. What's the next article you want to deal with? We've, we've made a suggestion on this that that be increased okay. to cover those things that can be covered by that fund and taken out of the budget, adjusted out of the budget. And Fred's agreeable to that? I mean, are, we, are we doing Article 9 now? Why have the taxpayers mm. spend $9,000 when it's sitting there? Uh, I agree. Madam Chairman? It's a wonderful idea. Madam Chairman, did we get Fred's okay on them reconsidering it? No, we haven't given any details that he requested to do so. Are we doing Article 9 now? Rich? Let's just clean up one thing. Yeah, let's slow it down a little bit. One at a time, and let's the go details, back to hands. Diane, on this thing we just talked about, Diane knows exactly where that money is. It's in the operating expenses part of our rec department. It's very clear. She only have four, five, or six accounts. She also supply that to Fred. We're trying to help them and the voters out at the same time. There's no sense in spent in charging the taxpayers I nine thousand dollars when it's. I understand the argument. So I just don't support all of the energy going for nine thousand dollars. Well, I understand that in principle, I, I, I am inclined to agree with you. But given all the other work we have to do, I don't see you know it what? exploding it's, it's, high it's on It's all my in the agenda. wording. It's changing well, a number. All, making all work is important. Yeah. And well, let's work. keep that in mind. <laughs> so all right. Can you kick him for me? No. Now I think no, it's time no. to turn it over to. Do you wish to? <coughs> <laughs> no, I thought you Diana, thank you. No, kick you. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm going to stop talking. Chris, would you join us? Article 9, is that it, ma'am? Uh, <laughs> number 9. Will tell you. Number 9. It's always tonight. Just I have no voice to yell across the floor. Madam Chair. <laughs> I believe you have one article for conservation in there here. Yes. Okay. And we'll be taking that at the end because we need to have a little discussion about that. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, may I move Article 9 as written to sue a bond for $2 million for the purpose of constructing the necessary upgrades? to the wastewater treatment plant facility septic receiving station. I have a second. second uh, 
And now, Chris, you're up, and you don't Chris. have to read the whole thing. Hey, hang on, oh. Tim. Tim, <laughs> the chairman's running the meeting. Yeah. Well, Forgive me, Jerry. Or chaos rules. You're forgiven. Got Article Nine, so I can read it. Okay. Let's <laughs> move as written. Somebody has to. <laughs> Oh, and Steve, you second. All right, Chris, we're going to turn it over to you. Okay. I'm actually going to turn it over to Jennifer. That's mine. That's copyright. Okay. Gentlemen, enough. The, Thank you. The process that we started with is um, there were a number of things that needed to be done at the wastewater treatment plant. Um, this uh, septage receiving area upgrade. Um, combined with a wash down facility, combined with we have some in external and internal piping that needs to be corrected at the uh, wastewater treatment plant. When discussing this with the Board of Selectmen, the, the idea was to put all these things together because certainly the, the type of uh, labor, professional labor, their contract labor that would be hired, let's say, to repipe the uh, septage lagoon and, or uh, septage receiving area and make changes to that would also be the same people that we would use to redo the internal piping uh, things that we have and also to excavate the ground to do the external piping uh, things that we have. Um, Michael Doobie is our uh, chief wastewater operator. He can explain to you pretty well the, the intricacies and nuances of those things, but from a layman's terms, that's why we're here with one bond issue. Um, when I took over uh, in April, I asked Mike to go top to bottom, tell me all those things that are necessary to get improved at the plan. I asked basically all the department heads to do the same thing. He came out with a list, I think, of about 20 things, some of them very minor $1,500 items, but some of them a lot bigger. It was these bigger ones that we elected to uh, move together because to do each one independently would we'd suffer the cost of rebidding four different projects, managing four different projects, all that would be multiplied four times. And that was the logic to put this sewer bond together. And I'll let Jennifer speak more to the, to the four components. All right, sounds good. This is warming up. I do have some slides that we can go with it. Are we reading the whole thing or did you say no? No, it's moved as read. No, no, read. Uh, so basically the four components and the first one that's talked about is the septic receiving station. Uh, right now the septic receiving station that we have is a big concrete chamber. And if you give me one second here, um, now that it's rebooted and it can't find anything, we'll be uh, good to go. <clears throat> and this is uh, all part of the slideshow that you would find online. So if anybody's been on there, um, this whole presentation's on there. Way, it yes, it is. So it just has the um, <laughs> the same pictures. Yeah, and we, we did this same presentation up to this point for the board of selectmen. <clears throat> up to this. Point. Yeah, in other words, we stuck before with the other Warren articles and the other um, CIP items and right. budget idea. So when we, prevent, uh, when we presented to the selectmen, this was the sewer bond presentation we also did um, right. to selectmen. So basically, let's start the slideshow from here. And basically, what is in this bond? Uh, there are four components that are in the bond. Uh, you have the septage receiving station uh, that would be part of this bond. You have a uh, washdown facility. Uh, this washdown facility is connected. This is where the discharge from the washdown facility would go. It would go to the septage receiving station. Uh, there are new uh, pumps and drives and uh, pressure reducing systems that would go with the uh, recycled plant water. The recycled plant water is also part of the septic receiving station. They all are interconnected. And then the last piece here um, is a emergency generator for the plant aeration system. 
Uh, this component, um, albeit not tied uh, to the septage receiving station, the recycled plant water, or the washdown facility directly, is a crucial component for the operation of the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, right now, uh, there is no emergency power for our aeration system. And the aeration system is what provides our secondary treatment, which is required under our permit. So for a long extended period of time, if we were to lose power, we would not be able to provide the second process of our uh, treatment facility. So that was why we grouped this uh, all together. So those are the four components that are part of the uh, sewer bond article. Uh, basically, what is this septage receiving station for you uh, that may not be familiar with it? Um, last year, well, in 2014, we did uh, one, over 1 1.4 million gallons of septage uh, was taken into the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, basically, this is municipal, industrial, the septic tanks. They all come and discharge into the septage receiving station. Um, as you can imagine, this material is not just straight up do or poo. Uh, it all comes with uh, hairs and plastics and grease and particles. And once all those things, if they aren't taken out appropriately and get into our head work systems, they just cause us problems down the line. Um, the system that we have, uh, basically, you can see in the top hand corner there, there's a truck emptying. It's a little bit of a trough. It goes into the trough that goes into the tank. And you manually have to take a rake and rake it off if whoever's discharging and then put it into that grit box that is uh, behind it. Uh, so that is the current process. Right now when the septage goes in, I had mentioned before how the recycled plant water is part of this. That recycled plant water flows to help make it move and dilute it and bring it back into the headwork system. <coughs> um, and then it goes off to the headworks, which is the first part of the treatment process in our system. Uh, so the septage receiving station that we're looking to have is, um, they call it this raptor system. Um, basically, it would help us um, get these fine particles out, get these uh, materials, the hairs, the plastics, uh, allow us to get it out so that we don't have these problems downstream as far as the pumps and the clogging. Um, as part of redoing this, we'd get a new grit box. The new grit box um, would be weather tight. The one we have right now is not. Uh, right now, we're paying probably over $8,000 a year to treat that water that was coming in to dilute it. That water has already gone through the treatment process and it comes back in and it goes back in. So we're treating water that we've already treated over and over again. So this would remove that redundancy in retreating uh, water. And at the bottom here, you can see um, our grip box is over <coughs> 10 years old. Um, so that's the septage receiving part. The washdown facility, what you're looking at right now is our current washdown facility. It's uh, not high tech in its greatest sense of the words. Uh, what we need to do is have a system that meets um, the regulations. We need to be able to capture the runoff. We need to be able to uh, contain the runoff, separate the runoff, treat the runoff. Um, we need to have a place to wash down the vehicles to get the salts, the sands, the dirts, the things off of all our vehicles, um, our vehicles, police vehicles, fire vehicles. What you're also looking at there, it's the fire hydrant with two hoses sticking out of it. Why two hoses? When the sweeper comes in on a daily basis, um, they actually take the fire hose connected to the back of the sweeper, and that's what we use to flush the sweeper out with. Um, and so all the grit that you see on the ground is literally beach sweepings or sweepings that we've taken off the roads. Um, we then go back with a backhoe and scrape the pavement, pick that up and probably either put it in the, the grit box or if it's clean enough, it goes right back into our <coughs> sand piles, our, our refuse pile. So it's a very uh, low tech, non, really non-conforming way to do what we do. And laborious. Right. I mean, the fact that you then have to get into another machine to sweep it up, to pick it up, to drive it somewhere else, discharge it, versus putting it through the process. Yep. Um, Go ahead. So again, this is connected because the new septage receiving station, um, it would be covered. It would have the washing capability. We are not talking a car wash. That's not what this is. It's, it's the appropriate hoses. Um, in heights and levels to be able to wash tops and bottoms of the vehicles. 
Um, it has the appropriate under drains to collect the water and then the piping uh, to take it to the septage receiving station. Um, and, and most importantly, it's going to be designed as what they call a best management practice, which is what meets the regulations. So that brings us to these internal, uh, internal recycling yard piping improvements. And I challenge you all to say that fast a lot because I can't. Um, basically, as I was saying, currently the flow that enters um, the headworks building, so the first part of the treatment plant, um, it's if you were to uh, meter it, it, it's skewed because you're getting the stuff from the septic uh, receiving station that has the yard piping in it. So it's not all waters that are coming or, or waste that's coming to the plant. It's some plant water that's also coming to the plant. Uh, this was something that was identified by DES um, during the administrative order uh, that this area should be separated. So that would be one of the improvements that would be done here. Um, it would also install the actual flow meters so we could get readings um, of what's exactly coming in from all the areas once we remove um, this recycled water. Um, so if you think of it, you have the northeast interceptor, the septic station that comes in, you have the church street station that comes in, and then all the west end flows. Now we'll be able to bring them all to one port and be able to sample those um, to get not only just flows, but look what's coming into the headworks process. Currently, if I can add to that, one of the problems we have, we have high strength waste coming in from a certain part of town. And right now, we're not able to grab a sample and determine what the actual strength of that waste is. Um, it, it's so strong, it causes fluctuations in the, in the plant's operations. So. The other thing that we're not also able to do is uh, flow monitoring as part of the, when we had uh, an I and I study done two <laughs> years ago, and we, you know, we treat 950 million gallons a year. People only use or purchase from aquarium about 350 million gallons a year. So 600 million gallons is inflow. We're trying to figure out where is it, where is it coming from? Our problem is it's, it all ends up in the bathtub and there's no way to, for us to segregate the flows. We know what comes from Church Street Pump Station, but from down Tide Mill Road or the Northeast Interceptor, it's just coming. Uh, we have no way of segregating that. If we have no way of segregating it, we have no way of knowing which run to, to go up to to look for our biggest problems. So in the long run, a, a project like this will help us uh, more quickly identify where our problem areas and more uh, accurately be able to measure the flows. Measure the from flow each of those and areas. apply any money that we have to to the actual source of the problem. Right now, we'd be like, you know, a guy holes in the the dike. You know, the little Dutch boy. So that's the, another reason for the project. While we're on this slide, can you explain the DES um, administrative order? Well, the DES administrative order was. Um, a number of years ago, we had, and this goes back four or five, we had, actually goes back six, we decant or dewater and, and, and pull out of the process sludge. To most people, it looks like wet peat moss. There's a, we have what we call a sludge press that we put that through. Well, the sludge <coughs> press was at the end of its useful life. It wasn't performing very well. Um, and as a result, uh, sludge layers in each one of the tanks, right now we maintain on all the big clarifiers two, maybe four, tops, maybe six. But if we do six, it's for a very short period of time. That's the thickened water at the bottom. We actually test or we, we dipstick for that. Better, lack of a, he calls it a sludge stick. Lack of a better reason every day. <coughs> um, so we maintain a very low level. Back five years ago, it was 12 feet and 14 feet thick. Basically, uh, we weren't dewatering. Uh, because we weren't taking action, we were just hauling off a lot of thick water every day, uh, just transporting it off-site in a tanker truck, that we ended up going under administrative order. The administrative order resulted in the project that two years ago we completed, and that was a new press. We have a new four, Fournier four-barrel press 
we now produce cake anywhere from 24 to some days 30 and 31 percent cake is that good yeah because the better thicker cake you produce or process the less water you're, you're hauling out of the plant and the less tipping fees you have to pay at the landfill so that was the administrative order but they also recognized under the administrative order they identified these other things that you should take action on for instance one of them was um, the pump that actually pushes the sludge to this press it doesn't give us a constant pressure Mike's work with Penn Valley pump we have a new pump that's installed um, we're going to test run it for six months before we pay for it so operationally under that administrative order they did identify some other things and this internal yard piping was one of them where do you want us you want us to continue or, or okay all right so the uh, next part of this and included in here and this goes with uh, again having the same contractor so you're going to be there redoing piping and things uh, the valve pit safety projects these are the valves that control the flow from the thickeners and the primary clarifiers they all come to one point on all the lines that come in it is down in a uh, concrete pit uh, that basically requires confined space entry and these are manual valves they do not have the uh, electronic automated systems on them uh, so this is just something while we have everybody there that we would be able to uh, put in six new valves, attach the appropriate electronics, get the SCADA systems in and programmed so it becomes part of our job cal and part of our everyday uh, monitoring so that we can monitor um, these primary and uh, clarifier drains and the thickeners. To build on what Jennifer said, this is not a feel-good project. Um, two years ago, uh, during a plant tour, I got the opportunity to look in this particular area because of uh, uh, a little bug, a little birdie put a bug in my ear. What I observed was um, the pipes that you see there, those two red pipes, they're only about a foot off the floor. <coughs> um, the grit that's in the sludge is so abrasive that as it passed through the pipes, and through the valves that are in this pit, it actually wore away the pipe. Almost, well, it was, it was paper thin. It was to the point that effluent was coming onto the floor in the pit as quickly as it was leaving. So it was basically just, it was a self-siphoning pit. Um, because it's a hazard for our employees to go down in there, um, it wasn't part of the daily check. It was part of a weekly or, let's say, a monthly check. Um, so when I saw this, I said, really, it's, it's unacceptable for in the future. Because one, if, it had gone, if the failure had gone further, I could have lost one of the tanks. It could have bubbled up through the ground. That problem I didn't want to have to deal with. Secondly, I didn't like the fact that uh, it, if I was in an emergency situation, like, let's say, after hours, and we get a lot of after hour calls, two people would have had to come in to respond to this one to stand above board one below board so we follow safety protocols since I've come on and you can ask all the people that I work with safety is is job one if and I even said it today to people if there's something that's in the facility that's not being done safely requires me to spend money, let's say, to buy goggles, a <coughs> fall hazard, a trip hazard, or in this case, a hazard to people going into a pit. I want to know about it, and I want it corrected now. That, to me, is more important than, let's say, you know, you've asked me before, what, why sometimes don't I cut all the trees that's in my budget? Why don't I cut this? Well, if it came to cutting a tree or doing this, making it safer, I'd do this. Because the, the value of the staff that we have safety is one job one and I repeatedly tell the staff do the job right do it safely we ask a question in the interview process what are the three most important tasks whenever we hire somebody for doing a job the correct answer is safe on time and maybe within budget or correctly 
we get all sorts of answers. Well, look at the manual, get it done really quick, or get it done for a nickel. That's not the answer we're looking for. Safety first. And we start that right from the beginning. So that's why this project was identified and is on here. Partly the reason why the pipe even corroded out to begin with was the very first project that we told you about, the septage lagoon, or the, uh, the grit receiving area in our septage. We need to get more grit out of the process. If we don't, it ruins pumps, it erodes pipes, it just causes us maintenance headaches that ultimately cost us dollars. When you look at how much it costs to maintain this plant, why does this guy spend $90,000 a year in just general maintenance? This is one of the reasons why. So these upgrades are not feel-good projects. They are truly necessary to operate the plant more cost-effectively and to keep it operational 100%. It's a huge investment. <clears throat> That's all I have. And then with that is this last piece that uh, I spoke about earlier, the aeration blower um, generator. So basically, uh, the blowers are the component of the aeration system that provide the air, that feed the bugs, that do all the good things that break down the process. Um, we have three existing blowers currently. Uh, there is room for expansion. Uh, it requires us to have two on at a minimum during the summer just to keep up with the demand. Um, and on top of that, in the summertime, the blowers become less efficient because it's so hot out, so they have to work harder and harder. Um, we have no backup power uh, connected to these blowers. Uh, it was something that was identified through uh, a, a Homeland Security uh, tour type of thing where they were looking at your emergency <coughs> response systems and those type of things. Uh, that was something that was identified and something that I will say just right now um, and why the article is written as such is that we have been authorized 100,000 uh, 100, towards uh, the component of this um, for this generate, emergency generator. Uh, the new emergency generator is a 600 kilowatt. It will work on the blowers. Uh, part of this is also figuring out um, the, the happy medium, uh, making sure that the right blowers are there with the right emergency backup. So we get the most efficient system. Just because the blower is bigger doesn't necessarily mean we need to have three big blowers. Maybe it's more efficient to have a smaller mower and two, but this is all part of what we put into the cost estimate uh, and everything when looking at this generator so we would uh, have the funds available to pick the right one. I asked uh, some people in Concord how come um, we never had aeration. We have, mo we have all the other aspects of the plant backed up by emergency power. We have a big cat generator right outside. But why was this, from the initial design, overlooked? They admitted that when they put together the design requirements in the 75 to, let's say, 85, having aeration on backup power was not a requirement. It is today. It has been for over 10 years. Uh, so they admit that if we were to undergo a major renovation of the plant, part of the permit process would be put the aeration section on backup power. If we were to open the next tank, right, during the next expansion. Yeah. This is our Achilles heel. Yeah. This this one project is our Achilles heel. For the, we've been, a, we've had instances where we have been without power uh, for like a day, had to run on the emergency generator. The bugs here, as the day goes on, they die. What happens is the fecal count goes up in the discharge water. I'd have to add a lot more chlorine to kill the bugs, and I may in fact run the risk of violating our discharge order, i.e. sending out untreated water into the estuary. So this is the, the plant's Achilles heel. And that is, the, those are the components of the sewer bond. Right, so that's the sewer bond. I turn it back to you, Madam Chair. All right couple of questions. I see that included in this is um, to authorize participation in the SRF. Um, do we know that there are any, I mean, there hasn't been much in the SRF, but do we know that there are any funds available? Yeah, uh, we applied for them early and uh, I believe the blower was 
rated 9th out of 25, and then the septage receiving station that was ranked 17 for the total projects that they got submitted. How many projects do they have? Uh, I believe it's 30, but then they cut them off up to 25, so they'll fund up like the top 25. Yeah, be nice to be in the top 10. Um, the costs that were assembled for this, Chris, on the two million, how was that determined? Jen has more of the backup, but a lot of it was <laughs> from um, our consultant right here, and we actually actually had them look at the various components of it. I know they did the uh, the Raptor uh, grit removing equipment. They had that from other projects. In other words, they had a current pro price for projects that they're currently doing for others. Same thing with the uh, additional grit tanks. The building, they just used, it's a standard metal yeah, prefab we building. We together on that one. Right. Yep, to so. price up the wash down facility. And then, you know, went out and looked at the price of the valves and uh, did labor costs and electrical costs uh, and plumbing so costs. So is there an entire plan with that and those costs? Yes. I mean, everything is broken down into each of the individual projects. Project. Yes. I mean, this is an extensive presentation and you seem to have quite a bit of documentation. At any point in time, was this conveyed to the Budget Committee? The information itself? Yeah. No, I'd have to say. I mean, this is a $2 million bond. bond. And we're going to sit here in a scope of 20 minutes and decide whether we should recommend or not recommend $2 million to the taxpayers. Certainly would have been nice to have a little bit more prior to this meeting. I can say that in my first, I probably should take some responsibility for that. I, in the first year of my tenure, um, you come to grips with how things like this more accurately come together. I asked for the truth from my staff, and I got it. What I didn't, wasn't prepared for was the amount of work to um, bring the answers forward. Um, I give credit to Mike. He, he did exactly what I asked him to do, and that was, hey, here's all 22 things I'd like to get corrected in my plan. And so did the other staff. They came back with their 10s and 12s, and none of them were fictitious. It, just today, I got a list from Mark Richardson at the transfer station, 32 separate items. Some of them are going to be very expensive. So, in the future, I would say that if I'm coming back to you with something half a million and higher, I will ask to submit the, it forward. But to, but to do so, I do work with the Board of Selectmen and the, and the town manager and would get, have to get their concurrence and, of course, they'd have to vet it first. So, I take responsibility for that. Probably some information could have gotten to you sooner. And as you say, you do work for the town manager and the board of selectmen. And it's a, it's a team approach. That being the case, no one's. Uh, it's not meant. No, I In any way, shape, or form, Chris, to put you under the gun because you work for other people. But I think that some part of the consideration on uh, something of this magnitude, two million dollars, needs more than twenty minutes before us, no matter how wonderful the presentation is. Yep. Um, and believe it or not. We're trying to work here to help recommend those things to the, the, the voters of this town that we truly need. And you can imagine, it takes a little bit more comprehension on a wastewater treatment plant. Like you say, it's, right. it's not a pretty thing. It's not one of those things. But knowing more than I want to know, when you start talking about safety and you start talking about some of these things that are looming, we also didn't have a lot of time on the pump station. So if this is the end of your presentation, I'm going to send it around the table for questions and bear with us because some of them may be benign, some of them may be very detailed based on the depth. Understood. But this has been our only opportunity to discuss it at all. So if you'd bear with us. I'm going to start with Nick and then Jerry. Can I see your hand up? Yeah. Okay. Um, Seems like there's a lot of projects rolling to one. I'm, I'm new to the table here. What is the benefit of uh, 
lumping all these projects together, could they be done separately? Um, what's the benefit? I'll give you one for instance. The <coughs> uh, external yard piping and or the pit were both projects that are under the valve pit. Are both projects under 100000 I could bid them separately. Um, we could let them, if you will, come right out of a, uh, take them as a maintenance item. At that small of amount, they won't qualify for SRF funding. So that small of amount, I'm going to suffer the cost of bidding each project independently. Mm -hmm. When the projects are that small, I won't, like, we got a Penta Corporation and, and, and another big corporation to bid on the, the, the pump, Church Street pump station. Projects that small, they... Not a big fish. Not a big fish, <laughs> exactly. Gotcha. So you have to... For SRF funding and or grant funding and or uh, a lot of the other projects that you want to go for, um, you, you have to combine work. And then when you do, the inspector that's uh, on the site that you're paying, in some cases, several hundred dollars a day for, uh, he can be sticking his head in on the septage uh, receiving station, seeing how that's going in go over see how the other crew is doing on the piping, go over to the yard and see how the excavation is going, changing that piping out. So you get some bang for the buck that way. Um, and then the, ta the taxpayers get to decide, or I suppose the selectmen do, uh, whether to pay it back over 5, 10, 15 years, depending on how, what the bonding and total liability is for the town. So that's the benefit of grabbing these all together we could have a huge economy of scale. Thank you, Chris. Yep. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jerry. Yep. <clears throat> and I know you've spent some time over there. Uh, I'm, I'm very familiar with the wastewater treatment plant <coughs> and the piping and the generators and the blowers and, and um, some of the things he was talking about. But in November, this committee here designated Mike Plouffe and myself to go and do due diligence on this project. My first memo went out on November 24th. I tried desperately throughout the month of December to get Mike and I in there. It was denied. There's a lot of questions I have here that could have been answered. The measurement system associated with the piping and so on, a lot of things. I worked very closely with Mike Doobie and Mike Carl. I respect them a great deal. Finally, on December the 16th, I gave Chris seven dates. I said, look, pick one of these dates. Dr. Mike, Mike Mike's was free. My, I was free three or four days before Christmas and three or four days after. Pick a date. We'll come in at 8.30, 9 o'clock. We'll stay till, mid, uh, stay till noon. We'll do diligence. I was interested in the project. I put 10 months of my life into this thing. I went in September of 010, came out in March or April of 011. They had that big violation. And the violation was we released things into the estuary that were out of specification. That's what they clobbered us for. So I jumped in as a selectman at that time. I asked permission from Fred. He said no, but the selectman said, Jerry, go. I am technically orientated when it comes to quality control and process control. So I stayed there from September to March or April, and I did work work with the fellows really well, and I even communicated with Fred daily or every other day, making, making sure he knew where I was coming from, blah, blah, blah. Well, I tried to get in here. Couldn't do it. So I gave Chris the six dates. Didn't hear anything from six days. Uh, finally, December the 22nd, I said, Chris, silence is not good. And Chris gave me some reasons why he couldn't, you know, he was sorry and he was busy and it was holidays, blah, blah, blah. So I didn't hear anything on December the 30th. December the 30th, he said, we'll meet you at the town hall at 1 o'clock. Conference room. I says, Chris, I, I can't do due diligence in a conference room. I got I to gotta see the piping diagrams. I got to understand this to carry this sediment back to this board here. Of course, Mike wanted to participate and he wanted to look at the vehicles. Mike didn't get a chance to look at the vehicles. And I let it go. A couple days later, I hear from Chris. He says, Jerry, you're coming at 1 o'clock. I said, 
Where? The conference room? I said, that ship has sailed. I cannot report good sediment. I have no sediment. It's too bad. It is too bad because I know that I know what happens in that wastewater treatment plant. I know the flow. I know the process. I know the guys. And I respect them. But for us to be blocked out of there and stonewalled out of there, it really, it was a slap in my face and it should be a slap in your faces at the budget committee. And I'm going to read to you 3216 Roman numeral 2. To confer with the governing body or bodies and with other officers, department heads, and other officials relative to estimated costs, revenues anticipated, and services performed to the extent deemed necessary by the budget committee. It shall be the duty of all such officers and other persons to furnish such pertinent information to the budget committee. It did not happen. It saddens me. It really does. I'm going to recommend and motion that we do not pass this article. We do not approve it. We do not approve it. I could not do due diligence. Either could Mike on the art, on the vehicles. Okay. And that's kind of where I am right now. All right, Terry, I think we, we were stonewalled. We do have a motion on the table to accept as okay. as written. Okay. So let us vote on this I one understand. first. Discussion, gentlemen. Sandy. Well. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. And then Mike. Please. Um, I am going to support this. Uh, I know it's two million. I'm going to support it that it goes to, uh, as written, uh, to the public hearing. Uh, I would like to hear what the public has to say about it. Uh, there are a lot of projects combined in it. Um, I'm wondering how many years we are behind in doing this because, um, as you know, they have and they've been divided up and sectioned off, and they've gone before the public, and they've been denied. Having said that, I don't want to speak for the public, because I want to hear what they have to say at the public hearing. You know, we've got a $25 million bond out there for the school. I'm really interested in seeing where that's going to fly. Things that have been listed here are absolutely needed needed for <coughs> the welfare of the community and i'm sorry that the subcommittee was not down there and that you d could not do the due diligence but i don't think that we should penalize anybody and especially this community because this is so extremely well needed i'm a bit concerned that it's being all lumped together in one thing but I, I will vote that it go forward because I do want to hear what the public has to say about it. And I, it's just, I don't, I don't know if it's going to get passed. There's so much on the, uh, there's going to be so much on the warrant. And there's just so much money. And everybody can think everything is just rosy and wonderful in Hampton. But people are losing jobs. Everything is not so wonderful out in the uh, economy. And, but I am a firm believer that it, it should go forward to the public and the public should get their input and the public decide. Appreciate that, Sandy. Mike? Uh, uh, yes, I'm of the feeling that when this committee or anybody that has the expertise to look at something like this has an opportunity to look at things and determine what's the best for the town, I think that's what we should do. That's what we tried to do, and we followed the statutes to the letter. And I'm very uh, annoyed that it's been such a rough road the last year or so with this particular combination. And it's really sad because what happens when you have a rough road like has been given us in the last few months and part of last year, it makes it very difficult for us to be objective. Very difficult makes it very difficult to be objective. And in view of that, and knowing what the statute says, because I've been down this road before, it's, you want something, you gotta work with us so we can figure out what you need and why you need it and how we're gonna pay for it. If you don't wanna do that, we're all done here. I can't possibly support this. Steven. 
Hey, I'm sorry, Mike, are you done? No, thank Mikey. you. Having watched your presentation, realizing how important it is that we have this system work, it cannot break. It cannot break. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now, the fact that this subcommittee wasn't didn't have entry and to the uh, to the project and I I realized that well, I agree with what Mike's saying I agree with Jerry and 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 that they you know if it would have been nice okay the road was rough let's uh, let's try to level the road out now but the thing that I actually I like your presentation I like the fact that you are putting four things together you're bonding it for X amount of years I can tell you right now two million dollars if just from my own experience at the village district we borrowed a million dollars last year we got such an excellent rate that instead of bonding it which would have cost us a lot of lot more money <coughs> and a lot more time we simply just as you have here bond our note we took a note with a bank got such an excellent rate ten years 120 payments a million dollars ten thousand dollars a month so if you could get something similar mm -hmm. ten years twenty thousand a month I leave that, that I know but but it's very affordable mm -hmm. and it absolutely must get done this is not a uh, something that you wish to have it's something it's like that pump station at the beach it had to be done because if if the pumps if you don't have electricity to aerate if one of those valves uh, the grit is wearing the pipes out <coughs> if that stops working you have an industry down at that beach that is you've got all kinds of hotels you've got all those people down there that can't stop and 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 that's just one example you've got the that new brewery that's pumping all kinds of stuff the fact that one thing that you said that bothers me, and I want, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. That's the mantra from business. The fact that you've, uh, there are six, you used the, I think, six million gallons, uh, and then something about two million gallons are coming from Aquarian, so where's all that extra water coming from? Those numbers are, if it was a little bit closer, it would be like, gee, you know, it's, I guess it's, it's not too bad. But the distance between what's coming in and what's being, you know, coming through Aquarian, that's that's got to be measured. And then you have to figure out who's who's pumping out their cellar <laughs> into the into the septa, you know, into your system yep. because that's somebody. The water's coming from somewhere, and that's that is a big problem. So that's all I have to say. Thank you very much. If I could respond to you, it, please do. I, One, I guess one of my thoughts has been, since director is, tell the truth, bring the news forward, whether good or bad. Let those, this committee, board of selectmen, town manager, voters decide. Um, because to not say something would be worse than, than bringing the message forward. So I understand it. if this gets presented to the voters, they may not vote for it this year. I mean, things like fire stations and schools have had to go through multiple years. But all I would ask is that this is a project that the collective staff, a mindset of 10 people, outside engineers, has worked hard on. It's something that I think we need to give the voters at least the opportunity to decide. And I can understand differences of opinion but I think I would ask that we give the voters the chance to and the thing Chris that I like about this as well is that the voters it's not just one maintenance project this year it's going to be it's going to be paid for by voters and taxpayers over a length of time <coughs> so that people 10 years from now that are moving to this town are going to be helping to pay for these Correct. this uh, essential uh, versus for instance we go out and buy a new ladder truck, and we do it all in one year. Right. This is being spread out so that the 
the uh, there's no tax impact on here that I you know you didn't put that on it here. It hasn't but, been determined yet. Okay, but the thing is that it's going to be very small because it's going to be spread out. It, it, so just in perspective to the risk, right? It's going to be very small. Okay, thank you very uh, much. I'm done. <clears throat> My first thought would be, if we need this project, a dispute between some members of this committee and the Board of Selectmen over the ability to get more engaged in the observation and perhaps management of these departments should not determine the value of doing this project. There's this system was shut down a few years ago because it wasn't kept properly, it wasn't maintained properly, mm -hmm. and it wasn't funded properly. If we vote against doing this, we're going to just regress to a point in time where something terrible is going to happen. Having said that, I, I would then go on to two questions. The first of which would be, if you can't do these things, what's the worst case scenario from not having done them? And secondly, if you do do these things, is there any benefit through FEMA in terms of the community rating system for collecting points for flood insurance premium reductions. I can speak to the, the FEMA one only because I sat with uh, the Rockingham Planning Commission the other day and our planning staff and went through the, the uh, FEMA rating system. Um, I don't know that we reviewed that day any additional points that would come from these issues but that doesn't mean that there isn't one I, I mean I think of the emergency generator uh, project that is being you know back up you're talking about flooding and preventing infrastructure problems um, having safety plans in place I would have to go back and check that I'm pretty sure that part of it probably would qualify yeah. for the points <clears throat> and then your first question was uh, uh, basically What's the worst case scenario if this is defeated and you can't do any of these projects? Well, we, <coughs> this is the current situation that we operate. It's, yeah. But it's, it's with some risk. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm trying to get. What is the risk? Well, one of the risks is if we had, for instance, blower <coughs> lost all power to the blowers and we weren't generating any air through, uh, certainly we'd have to react but it would take a day I would say to get other portable blowers in there um, in the meantime the water quality would it would start to suffer over a period of time and ba basically after an eight-hour period we had <coughs> such a significant die-off of the bugs in the in those aeration lagoons that Mike would probably have to call for another order of chlorine so that we could keep the chlorine tanks full because we'd be dosing pretty heavy our discharge. Um, we'd also become very reactive. Very reactive. Which if is we costly. Go, yeah, we'd go to an overtime rate. I mean, all it would be a 24-hour hands-on. Right now, we get to walk away after 3.30. We get to monitor the plant remotely through, through laptop. We can tell you what's running, what's not running. Um, the fine, if you were to uh, run amok of the process and discharge above your limits, and the EPA found that you did so with, you know, without using your head, 37000 a day. So there's a significant negative cost of not doing this. Significant, right. Thank you. So how many times have pumps failed? The generators failed? Well, realize now with the aeration, there is no generator attached to it. The only thing we've, we've had is we've had days where, like two summers ago, three summers ago, it's like one day in July, we were without, we were on generator power for the rest of the station for about an eight hour period. Mm -hmm. The ice storm that we had several years ago at our main plant. Generator. And the breakout costs for this? The breakout costs for the generators? Um, the whole project is about five hundred thousand dollars. About five hundred thousand for that. I'm sorry, did I see someone's hand up with Mike? I was just gonna add a comment, uh, if I may. I think 
in response to Mr. Ladd's comments about regardless of how everybody feels, how everybody gets along, and all that wonderful stuff, and that. Here's the problem. There's a statute that makes it very clear. And when I want something, if I don't tell you, if, if you're going to be able to give it to me, that I want it, here's why. Why should you even think about giving it to me or selling it to me? So what I'm trying to say is, it's not just the budget committee trying to do the due diligence or seeing if we're doing the right thing for the taxpayers or Statute 34. It is, do we need it? They should be able to willing to show us why they need it and the public. This budget committee represents the taxpayers, a legislative body. We are representing the taxpayers. If we think that they've got a good reason or a legitimate reason for doing something, we give it our approval. If we think it's a bunch of whatever, we don't. And it's up to the people who are asking to present a case to us. And they didn't. Thank you. Tim. What is the uh, tax impact on this? I don't know. That would be something that the finance office and with the work with the town manager. I, I, Madam Chair, do you know why we cannot know what the tax pact of this is? No, I'm as much in the dark as everyone else. And my biggest problem right now is lack of information. It has nothing to do with personalities. It has nothing to do with personal disappointments by members of this committee. It has nothing to do with any... I'm, I have agreed with everything everyone has said. <coughs> but the value of our vote it's because we're educated. <coughs> Excuse me, but I'm not feeling it. <coughs> want to add something while I'm clapping? I think we all want to have uh, a knowledgeable vote that can cast each of, our, each of the members and move away from her. And uh, certainly, how do you measure whether we're making a knowledgeable vote if we cannot? measure what was in front of us. What is the tax impact? Well, we don't know. Oh, okay. So we're supposed to, I mean, not knowing is what the root word of ignorance means, you know, to be unaware of, to ignore the fact, facts that we should have. What is the tax impact? Oh, we don't know. Okay, fine. We'll vote in ignorance, not knowledgeable, not a knowledgeable vote, but a vote lacking knowledge. There's no reason that the chair, or I guess anyone else, can tell us why we don't know the tax <coughs> impact of this, this proposed warrant article is. None of them are done yet. Yeah, there's no tax impact on any of them. No, none of them right. have a no tax impact. What? Yes, and we have the same challenge everywhere, but here we're talking about $2 million. And, and we talk about measuring. Well, you might say, okay, it's $2 million and you know, we did some funky, well, I would call it funky things over at the village district, but we won't get into why I call it funky. <coughs> but, but I uh, would say that has nothing to do with tonight. And I said, I won't go into it, so let's not go into it. Let's not go into that. District. As I said, I won't go into it, yeah. so let's not. I think what's needed, though, is so to have some The point is, is that direction. you're making an, an assessment based on uh, a note, not a bond, that was taken, and it doesn't cost much based on your estimation, and that's fine, but... The warrant article that's in front of us says that it will be a bond or a note not to exceed 30 years. It could be five years, which of course would have a much more significant tax impact than 30 years. So again, we are basically clueless as to how this is going to get amortized. So we cannot have even a sense of the tax impact. You see, so it's a matter of again not knowing that which I think ought to be known. You're looking at me. <laughs> no, you made an excellent case for, you know, management, you know, not being able to measure things means you can't manage things. So I'm looking at you because these are things that should be measurable mm -hmm. that we are not giving given measurements for. And so then, then I look at, you know, the bottom line is when I watch your presentation at the Board of Selectmen, you know, I watch with great intensity. And I was very much favoring this. I want the work done. Mm -hmm. right. 
But when I look at the Warren article that's in front of me, I'm like, well, gee, this, this doesn't give me anything to base it on. It doesn't say, well, I want the work done, but, I mean, is it being financed correctly? I can't say. How much is it going to cost the taxpayer? I can't say. And even, even more disturbing to me is that I don't pay attention to DPW this past year nor the year before because we have experts on our committee, and I simply yield to their wisdom and say, okay, I'm going to rely on their advice, right? They have questions that aren't answered. I don't know how many. I don't know how important those questions are. I only know is that it looks like a black hole of more things that I ought to know mm -hmm. that I'm not allowed to know. Mm. And I cannot support uh, my oath of office and say, I'm going to cast a vote in a state of ignorance and tell my voters, tell the voters that they should do likewise. I'm just not going to do that. I mean, the RSA 32, the budget law, which was quoted, and I'm not going to quote what Jerry said, but we need to keep in mind there's a budget committee, 32 colon 1, which tells us why we exist. It is intended that the budget committee have budgetary authority analogous to that of a legislative appropriations committee because we are, in fact, just that, a legislative appropriations committee. And it would be, in my opinion, a uh, dereliction of my duty to cast an ignorant vote on $2 million, even though I very much want that work done. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. I've got one comment. I want to make some comments, but I've got a question. Is this being taped? Will this go on channel 22? We're being told mm -hmm. it's being taped. Okay, so fortunately you would be. <coughs> we'll see. My position is you have to go along with these repairs at this point. Otherwise, you'll be in the situation yeah. forced with this where they're going to spend 50, 60 million dollars to rebuild their plant. You know, if you're not in conformance with the EPA, you're, you're going to have bigger problems and you won't have be able to deal with it. For example, I was watching a planning board last night. They're talking about a 150-bed assisted living facility. You know, if the wastewater treatment plant gets above 80 percent, in the summer you know you're, you're close to the limit. You don't really have a choice. If you're going to put another 150 bed on the system, and you know, you know, I'm going to vote for it because I don't see any other choice. I mean, this process, the budget process this year was ridiculous. So mm -hmm. You don't have any choice. So. Mike, then Jerry. Uh, <coughs> Brian, did you no. want to? Okay. I used to say something. No, bro, go ahead, Mike. There's no question that this, these improvements need to be made. The problem that I worry about is the track record in this town and the way we go about it. Give us a blank check, mm -hmm. we'll take care of it. Now, all these people sitting at this table, there isn't anybody here that's been down there with a septic tank truck. I have. I've backed into that receiving area. It's been done at least once, if not twice, in the last 20 or 30 years, it's been readjusted and reorganized. Simple thing to back a truck with a tank in that the water runs out the back into a hole. Simple project. However, when you design the thing so that the ramp, this, this is similar to the proposal for the fire station at the beach, when it was eight feet above Ashworth Avenue, how do you get into it? They backed the septic tank truck up there, built this thing, had engineers design it, and you couldn't <coughs> empty the truck because the front end was down, and the, and the truck pitched this way instead of that way. In other words, so, we flow toward the driver. They destroyed some of the cement. They made a ramp out around over here, and instead of backing in this way, you back in this way, and they made the dirt go like that, and then down like that, so the water went in the hole. Very simple. But they built it, and then they had to redo it. We built a salt shed underneath the power lines, so you couldn't dump a trailer dump in the salt shed. Smart move. We built a transfer station. They wanted waste, wood waste, and trailers parked against the wall. 
they were going to pour a concrete cast in place wall. John Hangan and I rode all the way to the east end of nowhere in Maine, Unity, to look at a transfer station with a T block designed wall that is cast and you build it in place and you can take it down tomorrow and put it over there rather than cast it in one piece and throw it away. Underwood engineers drew the plan. They designed the wall on the right hand side <laughs> of the driveway going up to the transfer station. When you back a tractor trailer in there, the driver's door and the landing gear crank are on the left side of the trailer and the truck. Where was the wall? Here, how do you get in there to unhook it? I was on the board of selectmen. I said, I'm not going to vote for this until somebody figures this out. Took the design, cut it out of the plan, turned it over and put it on the desk. You put the wall on that side, you back the trailer in over there, the crank and the door are away from the wall. It's safe and it's not underneath the power line. Simple project. Saved $105,000 by moving it over there instead of over here. What I worry about Give me a check for $2 million. We're going to do this, and we start in, and somebody makes a whoops between the beginning and the end. Now you built a washdown facility. You put a building on top of it, and how do you fix the whoops? And that's what I'm concerned about. The, the big project at the beach, infrastructure project, we don't have a plan. It's a design build. Give us $10, $14 million, and it's a start. That came from a past public works director. And we got pretty well along on that job, but there are streets down there that are probably never going to get done. And it's a shame, because it should have been done right the first time, not the second time, not the third time, and not forever, never getting done. It should be done, planned out, not <coughs> the last hour before we vote, planned out, paperwork, and a guarantee that something's going to work when it's done. We go through this project after project after project. And it's discouraging. And it's discouraging to be denied access to something that I pay taxes for, that I'm elected to do a job, and I'm told I can't go there. I don't like that. I won't put up with that. And if it continues, there's going to be a problem in this town. I think it's time that this stuff stop. I've been accused of not going down there. I've been accused of saying things I didn't do. And I'll tell you, when I can't see the stuff and I can't look at it, and you want me to make a decision, my attitude is that I should vote no. I don't have enough information to vote yes, and I will not abstain because that's not my job. So if you can put the paperwork together, and assure that this is going to be built right, I'd vote for it. But until you do, I'm not going to vote for it. Because I can't let the people spend $2 million and have you come back in two or three years and say, it doesn't work. We need to adjust it. I don't want to hear it. It's as simple as that. This last minute stuff is, is bad. Bad planning, bad organization, bad selling the product. Bad everything. And you've been, not you, not you personally, Understood. but this town has had that policy for years. And it gets worse and worse instead of better. And it's going to come to a head sooner or later. And it may have come to a head already. I don't know. But that's, that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. and, and this is a lot of money. There are people in town that can't afford this. And yet we continue to vote to do these things because we're told it has to happen. We were told that the Church Street Station would shut the beach down. And they jammed it to the public in the 24th hour. It's not right. It's not right. We got it done. We got a good price on it. And it worked out well. But not all of the things that we've done in this town work out that way. I've said enough. For the record, let me say that as far as the subcommittee coming down and meeting with us, you're right, they didn't. I know they didn't. Individually, 
you're the taxpayers, it's your transfer station, it's your public works department. If individually you want to come down, just please ask for 15 minutes notice, call. There's been a number of people that I've given probably 10 different couples a tour, of the, I call it the nickel tour, the five minute tour of the wastewater treatment plant this year. They come down for a permit and they, what's the big swimming pool? Oh, let me show you. And so we give them. So individually you can come down. Yeah. Um, and anything that I produce is, uh, any document that the department produces is just ask for it. It's done with tax dollars, it's yours. Yeah. And as far as our credibility to produce, I think in nine months you've seen, uh, you gave us p paving money last year, we paved. We got it all done, we spent down to the last, I think, couple thousand dollars. Uh, did so well that we were able to pave Toll Farm Road, which was supposed to be on the 16 paving plan. Um, yeah, Church Street pump station came out right. Yep. Why? Because we realized halfway through that we had the wrong engineers and we hired the right engineers and got it done instead of for four million, two point something. Yeah, two point four. So no, we I, I I agree. Some things some funky things were done in the past. Um, but these, they're not they're not getting done funky under my rule. And these funds do include I mean this is not just construction dollars. This is thinking, planning. Repairing. I'm sorry, but we don't know that. I have to jump in. We don't know that. We're sitting here right now, and we do it. not have a list of even the expenses. Yeah. Has any? No, I I feel sad that in some respects you you you've got a history, twenty years worth for most of these committees, and 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 so that's and it's hard to shake that, and yet at the same time I'm coming in representing a department that probably stuttered and stumbled in the past. Chris, part of and that, I don't take it personally. Part of that history, and I feel like we're under the defense a little bit tonight, part of that history, we did rally for the Church Street Pump mm -hmm. Station. Yep. We did support that. We did support the beach infrastructure. We did support the police station. We did fight and support getting both stations done in one phase, not two, in this committee. We've been painted as something that should be done away with, when in fact we have fought for every crucial thing that has been put in front of us to the end. Heated debate, but the outcome always gave a recommendation on those things. There were more, it goes back. My first one was 15 years ago with the fire boat when we were sending guys out in a rubber dinghy to save people in the ocean instead of waiting for the Coast Guard, all right? We fight on this committee. We debate on this committee. We're transparent on this committee, and we try to educate the public. It's not your, I'm not holding you oh, no, responsible, but I'm saddened by the fact this is stuff that we need. I'm worried that in the future, as it, what we say for one entity, we say for other entities, okay? We talked the other night about schools and building the school and now is the time because money is cheaper. All right. They came in very well prepared. They gave us the impact of what that would cost. They gave us a full scope of the project. They gave us the plans. They ran down the details. They had the answers and they allowed us open access every step along the way. What people saw was that we approved that. Mm -hmm. How could you not? All right. In spirit, again, a lot of us are with what needs to be done in this town. A lot of us, especially those who have served on this committee for a number of years, know what happens to DPW. You're the redheaded stepchild. If, if some other department needs money, it comes out of you. And I mean, it's the first smile I saw all night. No. You know what I'm saying is true. Yep. And if there's a project that has to go by the boards, again, you're the one that it's that it's, it's only smiling because it went white and didn't, and it didn't you know, stay and red. It's like, how do we get through this impasse with what we need to actually make a recommendation? And you know, I hate to say this, but when you come in Thursday, one week before, the drop dead day, well actually not even, next Wednesday is the drop dead day for us. And that's only 
because we added one more date, yet one more date to do this, all right? Yeah. What do we do? Do we withdraw? Do we give you an opportunity to give us the figures? Do you allow our committee? We didn't pick anybody. We weren't going to send you half a dozen people who didn't know what they were doing just to go poke and be nosy. We sent you two guys that are selectmen who know how things operate on both sides in here who have spent, Mike, I don't even want to go in the hours you've logged, Mike, down DPW, and Jerry spent, as you know, a great deal of time. Yep. Um, but exactly what we're talking about right here. That was the idea. Mm -hmm. We don't, last night when we were talking about, that last meeting when we were talking about, you know, storage and computer storage, quite honestly, I don't have a clue. I know how to turn it on, I know how to do email. I go to Tim and ask him because that's what he does, all right? In this same regard, these are the guys that we went to. That's why the whole committee didn't need to embark on you, and that's why their recommendations would have carried a lot of weight in here understand. to help you. We're not here to penalize oh, anybody. I, I understand. Okay? Yep. All right. Tim, your hand's up. Thank you. And they have helped me. And thank you, Mike, for your, your, your viewpoint. It certainly solidifies where I'm likely to vote. I'm likely to vote with the resident experts on our committee, which is you and Jerry. But, Chris, you, uh, you said something that I found out curious. You said any taxpayer can be down there and you know, do the tour. And, but somehow our subcommittee, it's a different matter. I think it has to do with Robert's Rules of Order, posting meetings, things of that uh, nature. Are you, were you aware that uh, we subsequently decided to appoint Mr. Clough and Mr. Zanoy representatives? As representatives, which was different than... Were you aware of that appointment? I understood that that was some of your actions, yes. And. And so the communication requests from them as our representatives, not as a subcommittee, but as our representatives, was a problem, more of a problem than a, a taxpayer coming down and asking for the tour, from what you were saying okay. earlier. Mm -hmm. Maybe I misunderstood when you said any taxpayer can come down and they get, you they can, get the tour. You can, any time. But yet our representatives could not. They could have come down any time they wanted to. The door was not closed to them at all. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing a different message from our representatives on that point. And, and Individually, they could have come down at any one time. Individually, but not Individually. the two of them together. If they wanted to meet as your representatives, I was instructed, requested that we meet as a formal meeting that with the manager's That's office. It. So you were instructed by your boss to behave that way. No, okay. to, to okay, treat it as a sub, right. as a sub committee. I, I appreciate it. We want to keep notes, so we want to have it posted. I appreciate the greater understanding as to why you took the stance that you did. It's uh, very useful to know. Yeah. Now, you also mentioned uh, to Mr. Ladd's uh, question what would happen if these risks were realized. Um, I'm curious as to what your estimation of the probability of the realization of these risks occurring in the next 12 months. Low. Well, we, low. We've been low. We've been so operating. We have a very this low is the risk way situation. we operate every single day. So we have a very low risk situation. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I'm done. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is there anyone else who hasn't spoken that has a question? Sonny, you have. Jim, by all means. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I need a little education. Um, I don't have enough time, obviously, to have you educate me on the whole process yet, nor do I want to be. But. Um, you're the department head, right? Correct. For eight months, nine months? Ten months. Since April. Yeah. Okay. Um, but you obviously have experience in the field before that. They oh, yeah. take you off the bakery line and put you there, so. True. How, how long do you have in the field? Um, how old am I? Uh, 30 years now. About 30 years. Okay. Um, and your experience lies in? About 17, 18 years. Um, and Mr. Doobie, was it? Yeah, I've been with the town since 98. Okay. And I, I know Jerry seemed to point you out by saying he had a lot of respect for, for what you do. Um, so that experience from, from the three of you has led you to this proposal, correct? 
Um, with the help of consultants. Correct. Um, that has to weigh a lot on, on my vote. I came in here, quite, quite honestly, I came in here thinking this is probably an easy decision for me. Um, Mr. Plouffe makes it a little bit tougher for me to vote for this because of, of what he's brought up. And I wish we would have had the opportunity to have his input on this uh, because I value his input on this and, and it would have made it a lot easier for me. But I don't want to hold that against the project. Um, I, I think you, well, this project got caught in some sort of gamesmanship or one-upsmanship that should have never occurred. Um, I, I, I still don't understand exactly why it did. I think there was some frustration on, on a lot of different levels. Um, you shouldn't you shouldn't be involved in that. I, no, no. Department heads shouldn't be involved in that. Right. That's that's above your pay <coughs> grade. That's what, how the elected officials want to have a tug of war between two boards. That that shouldn't involve you. Mm -hmm. And I think it did. And I think it, I think it's unfortunate. But because I think what happens is we're not looking at. Do we need this project? Um, from my brief introduction to this I, I, I can only go by the department heads word I don't think you're coming in here looking to spend two million dollars of taxpayers money just because you want to have a warrant article on you know, I, I think your job is to come to the town to go to the Board of Selectmen and say this is what I need to do my job properly to protect the taxpayers of the town and I think you've done that maybe it would have been a little bit better to do it with more information to us, with less of roadblocks imposed on you by, by other people, but that didn't happen. So this is where we are. So uh, it, it, it makes it tough because there's, there's some people here that, that I just wish would have been able to weigh in on it, but I, we don't have that information, so I'm going to have to go by this experience that's sitting up here in front of me who's telling me this is what we need and hopefully somewhere down the road we can make sure we get that extra oversight so that the things that Mike was talking about don't occur so that's all I have to say about that I agree with what he said <laughs> Madam Chair well put thank you <clears throat> Yes, any whispers? Yeah, I'm looking at the calendar. On the 14th, you've got the public meeting. In February 6th, you've got the delivery session. If you don't vote for it, this warrant article, you're just putting the town at risk. I wanted to speak to being above the pay grade. You know, Jerry wrote, read a section of RSA, and I don't think he finished that paragraph when it comes to reviewing the services performed and so forth. The last sentence in that paragraph says, it shall be the duty of all such officers and other persons to furnish such pertinent information to the budget committee. So it is not above their pay grade, it's part of. No, but I think they're caught, Tim. Well, I, I, no, I, they're I, caught I, this year. I understand he got a directive from his boss. Yeah. Okay, and so when you say you're relying on his experience, you're actually saying you're relying on his experience as filtered through his boss. I'm relying no. on no. I'm relying on Mr. Plus experience. Please don't tell me what I'm saying. Yeah. No, it's a, oh, I want to. When I'd like one to makes the argument this. that we're relying on his experience, we have to recognize that his action relative to receiving our representatives was based on direction from his boss. We can assume that he is behaving. I think it's reasonable to assume that he's behaving and reporting to us through the filter of his boss. Most employees would, in fact, behave that way. They, they want to filter through their boss. All right. Everyone wants to protect their job. Mr. Pluff, on the other hand, has no boss, except, of course, the voters, which is where we all stand. And so I'm getting my information from Mr. Pluff, but I don't know I don't have any filter there. All right. Is there anything more on the subject matter? Subject matter. <coughs> Not 
We've all given our opinions. Well, I mean, I, I, I see a problem here. Is there a solution? I mean, That's I'm, it. I'm, I don't know what, I don't know which way to vote here, because I would like to. Is there a possibility that this can be fixed? Sandy, can I, can I just ask my question? And I know that you are extremely professional in what you do. Everything that is listed in this project, do we need to do it? Probably. No. Yes or no? <laughs> Not probably. Do we need to do what is listed in this proposal? In the next 12 months. No, no. Don't. You be quiet just a minute. <laughs> just a minute? Need <laughs> my, with that. Do we need, Mike, to do we be quiet. these? It, it all increases the improvement of the plant. But the breakdown of that answer is, is it necessary in the next 12 months or six months or will it go two years? And I don't think that I can tell you that it'll go another year without a problem. I haven't stepped foot on that property down there since last October because I was told we shouldn't go down there. So I don't go there. And I can't get any information other than what I, what I see, and that's all I have to go on. Would you so, say so? It is so. It is fair to say that the items listed are needed because d down the line. I said that right in the beginning. Right, okay, so you will agree with me that they're needed. So I would submit to this committee that we take the high road. A shame that you guys. As our reps, but take that right out of it. Take, forget, take that no, right out of it. Okay. So, because I don't want to be the bad guy. Right. Here. So everybody sitting at this table, let's take the high road. Let's put it forward. Let's have our public hearing before the public. Get the public's input. And I'm not going to vote it, for this it's, tonight. It's either going to it's either going to go I'm or it's not. But let it go to the public hearing go. and see what the public says. Okay. They no, may show sure votes it, even if we don't. But but let's but stop I can't vote for beating it. up Chris. Let's stop beating I'm up not public works. On. Everybody, yeah. I'm not. Majority, majority, I'm yeah. Not. A lot of people on this committee are beating up the public works, beating up. Uh, you know what? I don't see it. Mm. I don't see. I don't see that either. Well, no. I do. It's, so it's let's take the high road yeah. and let's. Let's take the high road and right, go with the DPW yeah, estimation. Uh, Jerry, it's a very low risk. Let's close here by saying. You know what? Before you close. Very low risk. Okay, I'm going to ask you the same question because you're the one who spent. A lot of time recently yeah. in the power in, in the um, sewer treatment plant. Do we need what's on this plant? There, there's a lot of doubt in my mind that these are absolute musts. There's a lot of doubt in my but mind. But when we say absolute must between the two of you, well, I mean, are these, we are, talking these are about, definitely improvements. Yeah. Are we talking about a year or three years? Are we inside of a three, four year window? I mean, window? you could break down, break it down into pieces. You know, if I saw the repiping arrangement that they wanted to do and why they wanted to do it, because we haven't been doing it ever since 2010. The state said, hey, you're not doing it. We said, well, it's not a new plant. New plants might have to be reconstructed that way. And we're making the measurements and to satisfy you from a metrics point of view. And they, yeah. they took that answer. Okay? Right. And we said, well, great. That was six, five, six years ago. Okay? Now, I, 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 I wanted to get an update on that. Okay? What's driving it now, other than a nice thing to do? The generator. How fast can I can I get a replacement generator in here and get me fired up within an hour or two? Where do I get it from? Can I get it locally? Do I have to go to bus? Who who, who, who would supply me a generator to keep me going? Milton Cat. Okay. How <laughs> how much power do I need? Blah blah blah. Can I get it here in a day or two? It's not an emergency in my opinion. Okay. Should we have a backup? Yeah, I thought we did. I asked Mike at one time, Mike, do we have a replacement generator for blower motors? And I think Mike told me yes. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe. There's and I thought been, there's never been. There's never been even from the uh, transfer station, Mike. There's not. There's the uh, the old Church Street generator. Yeah. But it's not big enough to handle. It's not big power. enough. So we'd have to go get. We'd have to set up. We'd have to think preventatively here. Okay. If I go down, what's my alternative? What can I do? Where do I get the generator? How fast can I get it? Who do I get it from? Is that a real problem to me? You know, I mean, a, I mean, you know, it's a short gap thing because you're not going to be down indefinitely. You know, so there's a lot right. of things here that. that, that okay, that, that, I'm going to take this back here. Now look, this is where we are. 
and we acknowledge the fact that everything, everything that everybody has said has validity. Do we, is there a way that we can table this to next Thursday, to next Wednesday for a vote? And in that time, can you give us spreadsheets relative to the cost? We are in the dock here, I'm telling you. For those of us who have a problem don't have a problem with the concept. We have a problem in the details. And it's $2 million worth of details. One minute, sure. One minute, okay? And arrange for a visit so that these two men can come back. We don't, we can't all go down with you. We don't all want to go down with you. But have that time to spend that should have been done before now. Let's put everything that's gone by the boards by the boards. Or are we really pushed to the point right now of having to take a vote on this? Madam Chair? Yep. I'd like to rephrase the question to Jerry and Mr. Plouffe. We get a, get a clear statement from the DPW director that the risk or the probability of these risks being realized in the next 12 months is, quote, very low. Do you have any reason to believe that that is a not accurate assessment? I would, I would agree with them. Right. Michael? I agree. Okay. So we're dealing with a very low risk, according mm -hmm. to all the experts here, on this potentiality occurring. And we have a whole bunch of questions, most of them coming from our experts. There is not time for them to get those answers, even if we delayed it till Wednesday or Thursday. So I think we just, okay. should just vote on it tonight and move forward. Uh -huh. Can we make a final statement before you vote? Mm -hmm. Low risk, high cost. Mm -hmm. When you look at the, in the past when we uh, brought forth the Church Street pump station, the reason why we brought it forth and brought it forth so quickly was we envisioned that under the high summer flow that pump station would die. And if it did, we had to ask ourselves, who wants to go down the Ashworth and tell them, oh, everybody has to leave because the pipes are full, the effluent's going to start coming out. Oh, by the way, the state beach is closed because you can't use any of the public bathrooms. We have no capacity. The same thing would exist with this aeration portion. Not so much the other piping, but the aeration portion. As I said, that's the Achilles heel. So it's a low risk that it happens, yes. So we lose power for eight hours in a day. I might be able to get a generator. I'll get a generator out of Boston. But in the meantime, we'd be forced with, because we may, at that low risk, go to those 100,000 people on the beach and say, You're, we're going to give you an administrative order. It's a, the health officer is going to help us do it. You're shut down. Ashworth, leave. All the hotels leave. By the way, nobody can go on the beach. We'll come down with Jersey barriers. Well, I shouldn't say. The police would be the only ones who would have the authority to make them leave the beach. But there's no place to go to the bathroom because the businesses are all shut down and the bathhouses are shut down. I suppose people could still go onto the beach. It gets to a water quality issue is really what it gets down to. So it's a low risk. You can take it. We've been living with it. That's why I see it as a low risk. But it has a, we are not, we're, we're, we're a community of 15,000 during the winter and 100 and some odd thousand during the summer. And that's really the critical time. So we're not the standard little community that this plant serves day in and day out. We have much bigger liability, much bigger liability to others. And as far as when Jennifer and I went to school, we took an oath as professional engineers. We're charged here with upholding the public trust, not upholding the selectman's trust, not upholding the manager's trust, although that's implied. We're charged with upholding the public trust. I am charged with and brought forth a project that says this is a risk the community should consider. This is an, the Achilles heel of the plant. We should get this corrected. To do so otherwise would be dismissive of my charge as a professional engineer. That's why it's here before you. That's it. Well, I'd like to respond to that. 
I it's think we've time. we've oh, we've, yeah. we've had now we're on this All right. Jerry up here. <coughs> All right. So the mo uh, the motion was to uh, recommend as written. We have a second. All those in favor of recommending this Warren article as it is written. Well, when you sit back there, don't know you're there. All right. And those opposed? Nine abstentions. No, seven six. What was the vote? Seven seven. Oh, seven seven. Did you vote? Oh, wait, the seven seven. Oh, wait a minute. The 14 mean, of us here. Yeah, that's right. We better take, we better up take that count. All those in favor again? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, seven. That's 14, so it's tied. All right, and all those opposed? One, two, three, two, three, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. It's a split vote. Seven to seven. Who wants the next one? So motion fails. No, motion, motion fails. fails. Yes. It's nine o'clock. If you guys want to take a five-minute break, five-minute break. Just yeah, so five. five. So we can get no, the witnesses, right? Yeah. Yeah. the other night you were the first. No, one I don't ever want to stop this. And, and, and you know the comments that Mike's talked about before. This group of engineers, we don't want to come back to you in five years and go, ah, eh, well, it didn't quite work. So right. we'd like another five hundred thousand to, you know, now resurface with. It. Nah, we don't. No. We'll either do it right, do it right, right once yeah. or not at all. Want to come back to you with the right price? Right. 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 So you can exactly. try to I'm ready to, replace, <clears throat> I'm ready to right. replace whatever needs to be replaced, and not replace if it doesn't. Right. More or less. This okay. includes the preliminary design. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. We're not going to finish in time. All right. Um, you're not going to use rebar, or you're not, you're not planning they on it? They don't know yet. They don't know yet. Depends yeah. on what's That's what in this it. is about. <laughs> okay. Nick? Quick question. This goes from where the state wall ends all the way to the access road? Correct. Right. Okay. Thank you, Madam. Full wall. Right. Are we ready to take a vote? Yes. yes. Yeah. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous, I guess. No. Opposed? Oh. Phil's upstanding. Phil's upstanding. Abstain? <laughs> well, you're in where? What you? <laughs> I had my hand raised. I'm voting in the affirmative. He's voting yes. Article 21. Who voted against you're ready, Madam Chair. Wait a minute. Brian, Brian, uh, uh, Tim, let the chairman run the meeting, please. Hey, wait a minute. Yeah, just a wait second. Wait a minute. Let, it, let it catch up. What did you get? As soon as she's ready. Okay. And abstain was Brian. Said as soon as she's no, I voted against it. You voted against it. Right. All right. Doing any studies. Mm -hmm. Thirteen for one of Just one of a jackhammer, right? And, <laughs> and all right, wait a minute. Who abstained? Jerry, did you? Wait a minute, gentlemen. Fun. I don't think anybody abstained. So it was two against, right? No. Jerry, what was oh, no. your vote on? No, I voted for it. You right. Voted for it. Sure Only Brian Lapham voted against it. Right. Right. Here he is. Sidewalks. Yes, article 21. 21 for sidewalks, $45,650 as written. Moved by Jones. Who's second? Second. 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 Pierce. Pierce. Okay. I'm ready to speak on this unless someone else All wishes right. to. Well, why don't we have Chris speak on it first and do a presentation? I don't know if he wishes to. Chris, I'd love to speak. <laughs> Um, the amount that we came up with, the 45, 650, is really based on the what would have or should have been spent over the last three years. Uh, but a portion of that 45, we will actually be spending on uh, ADA compliant ramps. Um, a number of sidewalks were built, you know, 70s, 80s, really before the Americans with Disabilities Act came into vogue. Uh, or became the law of the land, uh, we need to back the boat up a little bit. 
Um, we have a number of sidewalks or crosswalks that if somebody who's handicapped uh, gets out on them, there's no way to get off other than running down the curb line, which really is not the best way to have these things done. Um, questions probably come up in the past. Hey, we've given you money. You never spent it. Well, I know. I've heard, I've heard it. We've heard it. Um, all I can tell you is the proof's in the pudding, the action that the department's taken. Uh, if you notice, right outside this building, we had some sidewalks that were pretty rough shape. Um, didn't have a lot of money. All I could basically afford was the new concrete. So I, we work with what we have. And we got the sewer and drain guys over here to jackhammer it out of the place. I got the highway guys to uh, haul in the gravel and make the base. I got my two carpenters trained on how to make the forms. I hired a cement guy, he came in for the day, we poured the cement and it got finished and my guys got trained out of it. So for less than $5,000, I got all that done. I also got trained out of it, uh, two carpenters who now know how to do it. <coughs> We've identified Toll Ave as where we go to town. Uh, I'd like to try and use, or at least try and use, the same process. Uh, get the most bang for the buck with the, the, the crew that I have. Will the 45000 do it all? Probably not. Will I get a, will you get $45,000 worth of work this year? Yes. They're going to do it. Okay. Because I'm going to direct them to do oh, it. I assume you meant $45,650, right? Yeah. Well, no, I did the 650. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've got money in the budget for sidewalks, right? Right. How much is that? That's in the 26. Only 26000 <laughs> has been for two or three years. You know, if we took that $26,000 out of the budget and added it to this number, I'd vote for it. But what we have now is, as you said earlier, year after year we put money in the sidewalks, nothing gets done. And here we have a warrant article that says, okay, we're going to take roughly 10% of the money in this warrant article to get ADA compliant, which is going to render us what? 5% compliant, 88 pound lighter. 50% ADA compliant? No. We don't know. We have no We're idea start. what the cost of getting 88 compliant town wide is on the sidewalks, right? I wanted to ask for three times this amount of money, but I there wish again. You did. Well, but you, I have to the be, right number. I had to be reasonable for I, I need two million for sewer. I mean, there has to be a point. So we start. We feel we want to start. We feel that this is a. I would. I would encourage you. Build faith project. I, I hear what you're saying. We have well, a budget to pass. Give us to this. Take, we'll make to it take happen. the engineering approach like you're doing on the, uh, the seawall at Bicentennial Park. You take an engineering approach. You perceive a problem, define the problem, get a preliminary design of a solution. Right. Okay. Well, we see a problem. We're not ADA compliant. Define the problem. How much are we? How much is it going to take to become compliant? We don't know. Why well, we stop there until we do know. See, that's the more engineering approach. You know that's that's the cycle of what you live in when it comes to engineering. Define the problem yep. before you define the solution. <clears throat> Here I'm seeing a solution without a de definition of a problem. <clears throat> that's why I have a problem with this one article. <clears throat> and I'm not going to talk anymore because I want to move on with this night. Thank you. Total program that's been identified, 5285000 I want to start somewhere, but I, I had to pick my battles and. Uh, yes, I, I'm very much in favor of this article, and I'm not going to beat it to death like my uh, previous speaker, but <laughs> I, I think that it's a real good idea, and the money we have here will <coughs> definitely go to sidewalks. Yeah. Because every year we've been voting twenty-six thousand ever since I can remember, and I think only one year we spent money out of that account. So. I'm going to vote for this. I'll beat the drummers for it, but I want the 26000 taken out of the budget. Period. We're not going to spend it, so why have it? We're doing the budget tonight. We're doing it on the ask Mr. Pierce a question? You're right. The 26 no, if, in the budget. If you Plus favor taking it, tomorrow night we're dealing with the budget. If this committee has some expression of taking the money out of the budget for the sidewalks, I will vote in favor of this. Okay. I, I intend to take it out of the operating Okay. I do. Yes. I do too. If I can, about, if the uh, committee side, goes I along, will, I will vote for this one. If the committee will go along with it, if he puts it in here, let's vote. Yeah. yeah. No, wait. You mean puts the money in here? Put the twenty-six in here. Okay. Add it. Add it to it. Uh, no. I. We can't no. change it. So no. we can't change it. Just forty-five. Gentlemen, mm -hmm. we have a little bit of water here. Sorry. Okay. Budget is tomorrow night. Right. A couple of things. I'm glad to see this. Let's take one thing at a time. Right. 
This tells you that you're asking for this amount of money that will only go to sidewalks. Yeah. Right. Those of us mm -hmm. who've been around, we're tired of giving money for sidewalks. Mm -hmm. And we realized when you came in that you did do mm -hmm. some of the work this year. We also don't want to see money in two different places. So let's take tonight as it is. Mm -hmm. You know, all of you, I'm sure, will be at deliberative session as well. If you feel that one thing came out of one place and you wanted to put more in another, you do have the right to change that. They also have the right to amend it um, <coughs> Monday night and send it back to us on Wednesday. Well, let's yep. deal with this here right now, okay? okay? All those in favor of this Warren article? Yeah. There you go. That was easy. Yeah, thank Next you. Political compromise. Huh? 22. Household hazardous waste collection article 22 for 20,000 bucks, also known as dollars. <laughs> uh, thereby moved. I'll second it. Do we need a discussion no. on this? No. Okay. No. All those in favor of this article? Opposed? Abstain. You can put me in unanimous column. Okay, well, you can raise your hand. <laughs> I'm busy warming them up. <laughs> that takes us to 28, I believe, yes? What's, le it's what's next 28 one? is the famous uh, uh -huh. conservation uh -huh. land acquisition. Nope. So we're oh, wait a minute. Hold on a minute. <laughs> uh, you gave me a heart attack. I thought there was another article. No, no. You can no, you're all set, what? <laughs> you're all set, Chris. Thank you both. Thank you very much, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, Thank I appreciate you. it. Appreciate yep. your work too. Nice, nice, nice job. job. Okay. Very, very Th good job. Thank you Thank for you. the uh, before <coughs> and listening. And no, nice job. Thank you. Very I appreciate much. the effort. Thank you. So, Tim, would you oh, like right. to read twenty-eight? I hereby oh, wait a move. Tim, easy, easy. Wait, I'm just asking. just one second. We have. Let's finish one thing. And poor Jadina's been back Please there the all night. The meeting. Thank you. Jadina, come on down. <coughs> Can we let Eileen handle, handle, handle this? He's running the show, if you don't mind. Thank you. Good evening, Jay. Thank you for waiting. Good evening. Somebody's got my water papers over there. Is that the, in front of you, Mike? Can you guys send that back down to me? <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, this is for the Con Conservation Land Acquisition Fund. It's the Conservation Land Fund. Is it, is it underwater or what? <laughs> Some of it is. All right. What up? Under the land. <laughs> Only at low tide. All right, keep holding here. All right. Um, sure. I'll read this one. Shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $20,000 to be placed in the Hampton Conservation Commission Land Acquisition Fund? That's why I'm saying acquisition fund because that's, that's what, what how it's written. And I believe the conservation coordinator um, notified that that word should have been taken out of the warrant article. Is that, was it? I, I believe that was the case. You need to take more than I'll one word out. You need point. to take out land acquisition. All right, keep uh, reading. We're going to only get a vote uh, on what's in front all right, of us. I'm, well, they're discussing. Okay. I'm going to keep reading. This yeah. fund sure. is used to acquire, maintain, improve, protect, or limit the future use of or otherwise conserve and properly utilize open spaces and conservation easements in Hampton in accordance with RSA 36-A colon sections 1 through 4 inclusive. Recent acquisitions such as Batchelder Field conservation easement have significantly reduced the size of the fund. The goal is to return the fund to adequate levels to enable the, com the, com the commission <coughs> to conserve additional lands on behalf of the town of Hampton. So this money is just to enhance the fund. All right, I shall move that as re as you read it. Okay, I'll move. move. Stephen, second. second. Okay, second by Scott. Anything you want to add to that? Um, 
I'll be happy to answer your questions. Um, I think the article is pretty straightforward, and it's as it has been in past years, the money is to be used only for the purposes stated um, as per RSA 36A. Okay. There's a lot of purposes, though, in there. And I'm going back to the title on this, Conservation Land Acquisition Fund. What is the, this article called? The intent is for it to be the Conservation Land Fund. And the reason for that is, rather than land acquisition, is because the purpose, as stated in the RSA, that these funds can be used for is more than just acquisition. It's for maintenance, preservation, um, uh, to maintain, to acquire, maintain, improve, and protect open spaces. So it goes to more than just acquisition. Naming the fund acquisition, as, as we've said in prior years, creates confusion. It had been called the Land Conservation Fund earlier on. Um, I'm sorry, the Conservation Land Fund in warrant articles in 2002. Land. Let me two, back up. It sure. was called the Conservation Land Fund? Let me give you briefly history. Um, in 1987, warrant article 32 passed and amended appropriated $75,000 to what at that point was called the Conservation Commission Accumulation Fund. <laughs> okay, wait a minute. In 19 what? 87. That's a different fund. The purpose was stated. And that was, I'm, I'm sorry, Jade. I, I, sure. need, I, I really need the details on this. So that's why I sure. wanted to Warrant Article 32 so in 1987. Article, it was what? In 1987. Conservation it was, Commission. What was it called then? The Conservation Commission Accumulation <coughs> Fund. The stated purpose for that fund was not worded identically, but, but in spirit, this stated purpose of that fund is the same as what we're calling the Conservation Land Fund. But it didn't s specify the way it's written now. And where would I find the way this one is written? Or is that just a copy of the statutes? The way the one in 1987 was? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry I don't have that with me, but it is in the annual report. It's in the annual report, 1987. Um, wait a sec, wait a sec, wait a sec. Um, I'm sorry, I do have it. On petition of Peter E. Tilton, Jr. and 10 more legal voters to see if the town will vote to raise and appropriate the sum of what the original request was for $30,000. It was amended up to and approved to $75,000 to raise and appropriate the sum of $30,000 for the Conservation Commission Accumulation Fund, s fund said sum to be applied to the protection of undeveloped lands in Hampton and the management of said lands for the public good per recommendation of the Conservation Land Bank Committee, which I had never heard of before. I don't know who that is. Or what that was a private petition. Um, yes. Thank you. So, you know, when last we met, we were asking how many different funds there were and what their names were, and it really sent us on quite a journey. We're just trying to get this all straight tonight on what they're called, where they are, how many there are. There is, I think I can answer that for you. Okay. Um, there is one, if you will, fund, and you can liken it to the town's general fund. And there are line items under that. Um, we have <coughs> under that fund, we have the salt marsh fund, if you will, an allocation for salt marsh and an allocation for island path. Those are called out separately because those were specific donations from private entity that were to be used for a specific purpose. Was that a power plant? They haven't been thing? used for that purpose, which is why those funds have been retained in the account. Okay, and those funds, are those the ones that are held in a money market? Um, I believe so, by the treasurer. Because we have one money market held by the treasurer under the Hampton Conservation Commission? Is that <coughs> ring a bell on those two? 
Um, I don't know exactly where she's got each of these pools of money, if you will. Yeah, there was a, uh, in those papers from the treasurer, there's one that gives that salt marsh fund, or whatever it's called, it's listed. Yeah. Account. It's like account. Account. No, no, we're trying, to, they're not, they're trying to just see how many different funds we have, how many right. different descriptions we have within these funds, because we're looking at a Warren article that we don't that we don't have anything named for that. Right. All right. So <coughs> if we're raising money, it needs to go to a specific place, and we need to know where it's going. And as we started and left off with the last meeting with you, just trying to determine. And, and these are documents sent to us by the treasurer, by the way. Um, okay. And we are showing a, a Hampton Conservation Commission um, money market account. We are seeing requests by the Hampton Conservation Commission. Um, and on that, there is the operating account, the conservation land, the salt marsh and island path. Correct. So there's four different entities under that. And you're saying that um, the salt marsh and Island Path were from monies that were given in the past? Monies that were donated to the Conservation Commission for those specific projects. Those specific projects. So only things done in the Salt Marsh or in Island Path can be taken out of that account? Yeah, well, the Salt Marsh is a name that was given to a project um, that was going to be an educational site off um, Island Path. I'm sorry, off of Huckleberry. <clears throat> Salt Marsh restoration that was going to be off Huckleberry. It was going to involve the installation of a culvert un under Huckleberry Road. The reason that didn't go forward is because one of the property owners there um, uh, objected to the project and it, and it hasn't gone forward. Okay, so, so so those monies were allocated specifically to that project. The Island Path project was an educational site that was going to be developed off of Island Path. Subsequently, we learned that there was a waste site, uh, down waste uh, dump site there, that prevented us from going forward with that project. Well, let me ask a question about that while you're there. If you can't continue with the project and somebody donates money for a particular thing to be done, and you can't do it, don't you return the money? Um, in this particular case, um, this past year, actually, we got permission from the donator to reallocate those funds. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> reallocate or give it back. So okay. there is something going on at Salt Marsh because I see an expenditure right, see back in the November report for $6,150 on that. The treasurer is still keeping those funds under or those monies under those names however they are being reallocated to the ice pond dam project with permission from the grantor from the donator and what fund will that sit in when it's reallocated it's going to remain in <coughs> under the name salt marsh and under the names island path until those funds are expended so it's not going to be renamed I hope you can understand our confusion. Yes, there's, I can. There's, the expenses don't line up with any of the things that they There's no name coordination here. We can't fall. It's a maze. Um, so Salt Marsh is now Ice Pond. And if you will, Salt Marsh is now Ice Pond. And so Island what is Path Island Path? What is also mean? Ice Pond. Oh, okay. Oh, They're well, both may Ice Pond. Out, may I point out, Madam Chair, just for clarification. Yep. We're talking either funds or accounts. They're two separate animals. The names that you're rattling off are the names of accounts. It's clearly spelled out on their right. on their account. sheet. The man's account. account. Mm -hmm. sheet. Operating account, conservation land account, salt marsh account, island path account. Right. They all those accounts live under a fund called the conservation fund. So the they are all is, under the conservation fund. Then what is under the town budget? The town budget expenses are, are not controlled by the treasurer they're under the finance director so all of our expenses that are under the town budget go to the finance director and those are um, salary of our conservation coordinator um, the expenses covering our recording secretary our um, 
our office expenses, um, office supplies, mileage, seminars, um, other fees that we incur. I have another question while we're here. Now, on this Warnock, what you call it, called the Conservation Land Acquisition Fund. We can't come across one of those. There is no fund with that label. So it's an account. So my suggestion would be for somebody uh, to change it to what the fund is actually called, as you suggested, Madam Chairman, and have us reconsider it when it gets changed in the war article. Because we can't, I don't see how we can justify voting for, to go to a fund when the fund doesn't exist. That's like saying, why don't we give the mon money to Mike Pierce's fund? I love the idea, but it doesn't exist. So why don't you give us a, a change the label to something that works legally? I'm confused. What? So conservation land acquisition fund, that's actually going to go into the conservation land account? Correct. Well, I mean, the, the voters are being told it's going into a fund that doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. Apparently the operation. Well, why not just take that word out, acquisition and conservation land? And the land, land. too. <laughs> right. And then it would. Right. I well, mean, that's there, what are, we're there, asking. Are, there are some <laughs> ways of, of curing this problem. But we are not in power. We can't change it. We can't change it. If I'm not mistaken, he did lead off with the fact that there was a request made. It just hasn't been at this yet. Yeah. So, I think, so I think the only thing we can do is table this until we get a warrant article that is uh, representative right. of that. So what's All the right, plan like at this idea. point? Change it to what? I'll, I'll withdraw my motion to, and I'll. It needs to be straightened out. Okay. So, do, uh, what, do you have any idea what they're going to change it to? And take out land and acquisition. It's a conservation fund. Okay. Well, I would suggest that since the motion maker removes his motion, that uh, we simply communicate to the board of selectmen that we see this warrant article as flawed in that the land acquisition well, fund does not currently I don't know. exist. I don't know that we have to And allow them to do whatever they think is appropriate. I don't know that we have to communicate to the Board of Selectmen as much as we need to. This is an independent Jay. commission. He's writing this Warren article, correct, Jay? Correct. No, okay. no, no, this is a Board of Selectmen Warren article. Is this your Warren article or Board of Selectmen? Well, it's not a petition warrant article. It's a town warrant article. It's a town warrant. Okay, then I, I stand corrected. Yeah. Okay, then I would say that mine's got to get together because we need the name of the fund that it's going into that actually has a real place. The land acquisition fund does not appear to exist. Um, so we need to be able to see that wording tied with the money and where it's actually going. Seems simple. Hmm? Seems like a simple. Uh, yeah. Do you want us to table it then? I mean, it's, that was the motion I was yeah, going to make, because it's somehow we communicate. To and that would selectmen. give the opportunity for the wording to be corrected to reflect the fund that it's going into, and we can actually tonight. vote on it next Wednesday. Okay. Right. okay. Make the motion. As long as I'm here, Wait. do you have any other questions about the warrant article itself? No, we're just... I understand, I understand your issues. Okay. With the, with the I, think, warrant, I think enough said. He understands what the issue right. is. The article, the article should change to so the people recognize we're changing the name of the fund. No, we're simply communicating no. to the Board of Selectmen that the land acquisition fund doesn't appear to exist. Yes. Thus, we see this Correct. Warren article as flawed. Yes. Okay. Yes. If the Warren article comes back to us in a different way, or even if it comes back to us at all, we will vote on it on Wednesday. That's the motion I put out there at the table. I'll this is until Wednesday. The Board of Selectmen have a chance to take whatever curative action they see appropriate. Right. With our advice that it appears, based on our research with the treasurer, right. that the conservation land acquisition fund doesn't actually exist, right? Except as an account. I'm assuming that this will actually be part of the conservation commission fund. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Conservation fund. Yes. Yeah, conservation fund. You want conservation fund. All right. You no, second it. I All second in favor it. of tabling it to oh, Wednesday. All in favor of tabling. Table, Hello, table, 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 table. Mike. What's the matter? Unanimous. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank you, Jay. I want to give Christy this list of questions on the wages. Okay. Right now. Right now. Before she takes off. Okay. We did leave room tonight on a, and we're running really late. But we don't have any other time to ask these questions. No, I have it on the agenda. Any questions that we have relative to changes right. that we'll make. Just asking you to make a motion or not. No, not a motion. Okay. It's part of the agenda. Chrissy, could you come down? We just got a few questions on revisions. Jerry? Yeah. Well, 
Uh, the, I, um, ask I'm you sure it's all in your head. Shot. <laughs> the, uh, Not if you want exact numbers. Huh? Yes. Yeah. 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 Tim, yeah. we want to get that. Oh, well. That was done the other night. I missed that one. Should I grab my budget? Uh, yeah, I think okay. so. I, well, it, with respect to what you put out, uh, I, I think that 15,200 is not in the, uh, not in the, uh, You're correct, so the Board of Selectmen did not adjust their budget on, at their meeting on Monday night, they chose to leave it to the budget committee. I had sent the memo to Eileen after I left the meeting because they asked me to notify you guys that there was a couple of changes that we had proposed. Yeah. Do you have that? Oh, yeah. no, that's your answer. I, 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 I'm just saying that when I look at both both default budget and the operating budget, 15200 is missing in the BOS column. I think it's in the default, but not in, it's in the default budget, but it is not in the BOS column. That is right. accurate. It's yes. not in the BOS column. That is true. Right. Okay. That was the first observation I made. Yep. And Along then, with the insurances. the insurances, you got it, Scott. Yeah. Okay. And in addition, in reviewing the budget, I quickly yep. I came up with, with some things that appeared to be startling to me. Okay. And they are wages, regular and part time. We had a seven hundred thousand underrun in 015, and we're liable to have as much of an underrun in 016. Uh, you wanted to have those answers at our next meeting. Yeah. Okay. 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 Uh, I got a question for you. We're talking about. Do you want me to explain the fifteen thousand two hundred, or you guys are good? That came up during the public work. You're gonna add it in, though, right? I'm sorry. You're gonna add it in. You're gonna edit the budget so that the fifteen two goes. The in. board of selectmen made the motion to bring it to the budget committee, and that's what I had sent to the budget committee on Monday night because I was asked to send it before I left in regards to three adjustments, um, 15200 right. I can find the paper in here. The 15200 for the beach raking, which the DPW director had yeah. brought. You guys got that. We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. Okay. You don't need you don't it's in my it's folder the somewhere. Bottom line of the deal. So there was bottom three bottom line items. We're going to add it. We're going to add, We're gonna it, add it. the budget mm. committee. Oh, all right. Okay. okay. See. So they, I think their hope was that you guys would add it as yeah, well. I, I followed that. So we're going to do that. At our okay. 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 I, I got that. one more question now. <laughs> I'm a little, no, you don't, you don't have to. This is not going to be one of those. It's not mind blowing. No, it is. Okay. It has nothing to do with is numbers. Is it too late? We're getting. We're still trying to get prices on insurance, right? And yes. Two, two items. My question is, who's covering us right now? PLT. They expire June 30th of 2016 at. 12. Oh, it wasn't. Well, that's well, actually was, July 1st. It, it wasn't what? Okay. What wasn't a calendar? Calendar. No, no, no. Oh, no sorry. Okay. No. It, the contract you, goes the from go? right. July 1 of 15 through June 30th of 16. Oh, so that. They, and they that's when be, they're covered with yeah. every person that they're covering now will end at 12:01 on so, July 1st. I see. So they end in the middle of the summer, so to speak, and you're trying to get. Correct. Got, okay, I'm all set. Thank you. That answered my question. I who is insuring this right, right now. But I forgot they're off. They were yes, they they're off for workers' comp and the property liability. Thank you. Okay. All right. One other, uh, uh, in in your middle paragraph here. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just gave you. Yeah, the 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 summary page of that January fourth the summary page here for the budget. Yep. In your middle paragraph, you talk about the fire uh, response or no, the No, you're talking about no, 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 no. Oh. All right, those are my January questions. Yeah, yeah. Right oh. here. Right here. This, this memo from you. I'm in front of Jerome at Sunday. Right. I am hibernating. Yeah. I believe this number this number here of two fifty my computer. Oh yeah, plenty of eleven. One, three, and one. Jerry, is it okay if we adjourn? Let's and adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Let's 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 adjurn. Let's adjourn. Let's adjourn. Let's adjourn. Let's adjourn. Let's adjurn. Let's adjourn. 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 Let's adjourn